City First, how are we doing? I want to say hello to everybody watching online. What's up to, uh, I got I to gotta give a shout out to everybody in Florida. What's going on, everybody at Cape? Uh, what's up to everybody uh, in Hananiga? And can we please make some noise for everybody at God Behind Bars? We love you guys. I'm uh, very excited uh, about this series uh, that we're in where we're kind of looking at some of the things that uh, God says a lot and things that can sort of be foundational for our faith. Uh, And today I want to speak to you on the subject of so you think you can pray. So you think you can pray. Today I want to talk to you about prayer. Now, uh, you might be watching this message, you might be here today, and your relationship with prayer, maybe for you, you go, man, I haven't prayed in in a very long time, or or maybe uh, you're at one of our locations, you go, man, I've actually, I've actually never prayed. Talking to God's kind of a scary thing. Oh, or you might be here today and uh, you're a prayer veteran, okay? You are an intercessory prayer warrior is what you would consider yourself. Like, that's all you do. Like, you, you really get it. Um, I think that no matter where you are uh, today, I think you're going to learn a, a few things new about prayer um, and how we uh, sort of uh, approach God. Now, for me, uh, growing up, I, I learned a, a couple of things about prayer in, in the household that I grew up in, and the first thing that I learned about prayer is that prayers had to be long, okay? Now, I don't know about you, but I learned, I learned about prayer at the Thanksgiving dinner table, okay? So the food comes out, and uh, we all hold hands, and all of a sudden, uh, my dad began prayer. God, I thank you for this food. I also want to thank you for the hands that made the food. God, I want to thank you for the hands that helped the hands that made the food. God, I want to thank you for the manufacturer that made the food to drop it off at Walmart. God, I want to thank you for the gas to be able to get to Walmart and give them the resources. God, I thank you for the knife to cut the turkey. God, I thank you for the roof over our head. Thank you for the trees outside to put oxygen in our lungs so that we can breathe in between the bites. I'm like, Dad, we do not have time for this. By the time my parents got done praying, the food was cold. I'm like, listen, y'all need to pray over the food while you're cooking the food because we ain't got time to do this all day long, okay? I mean, they're thanking you for every family member, the roof, I mean, bills pay. I mean, like, they, they just take their moment. That's where I learned how to pray. I'm like, guys, listen, I, I, I don't know if I want to pray because my schedule right now, like, I got to go to school. I got basketball practice. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I can, if I can really do this. The, the second thing that I learned about prayer was that prayers didn't just have to be long. They had to be impressive, I don't know about you, have you ever been in a prayer circle? Listen, prayer circles are very intimidating, right? Because everybody gets in this circle and like somebody sets the rules for the prayer circle or there's going to be like the prayer leader and then there's going to be kind of this Russian roulette like anybody can kind of pray when they want to and then you ever have that moment where nobody prays, right? You're like, there's no one spiritual in this circle at all. And then there's like that first person that prays and they kind of set the tenor for the prayer circle and they say, God give us wisdom for the day. And someone else in the circle goes, mmm, that's good. You're like, are we doing sermons now in this prayer circle? And now you feel this pressure to come home with this like strong, impressive prayer. Then now you got to throw in God's nicknames. You're like, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. And they're like, oh, they're like, oh, this dude's great. Like he knows how to pray. You know what I mean? Like you got to feel that like that pressure. So I'm thinking, man, all right, so now my prayers got to be long. They got to be impressive. And then you just kind of go, man, like what? What are, we, what are we really doing? I mean, you think about when most of us pray, like most of us pray uh, when we eat, right? None of us pray for appetizers. I don't know why. Like you've never prayed for chips and salsa a day in your life. And <laughs> name a time mozzarella sticks have ever been prayed over. Okay, like just think about this for a second. We, we pray before we eat. Uh, a lot of us uh, get real close to God right before we fly. We're like, God, listen, I don't know. This could be my last moment on the planet. God, keep us safe. Some of you should pray before you drive, but you only do it before you fly. That's fine. Um, and a lot of us pray like we, we call on God when we experience crisis. Some of us only talk to God during crisis. Something's, something bad has to happen for you for prayer to be ignited in your life. It's a breakup. It's a job loss. It's, it's like something happen bankrupt like now it's like hey god i know we haven't talked in a while but can you like fix this can you 
Can, can, you, can, you, can you help me another time that our prayers will get activated is when someone we love is making poor decisions? Man, especially if it's one of our kids, we're going, man, oh, oh. now, now, now it, it's, it, it, it's time. And the thing that I, I want you to walk away with today is that prayer um, isn't about what you say. Um, it, it's about relationship with God. It, 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 it's, it's all about having a relationship with God. And what we're going to look at today is found in Matthew 6. And if you really want to know how to talk to God, ask God. And the way you can do that is you, you look at the life of Jesus. And whenever a rabbi was asked a question, hey, teach us to pray, or how should we pray? What that did is that gave uh, insight to those disciples. This is what is important to this rabbi. This is what he believes life should be all about. And here is what Jesus says, uh, starting in Matthew chapter six. It says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, to be seen by others. And, and this, this is what he says next. He says, truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Uh, I, I, sometimes when I'm sitting with, with someone and we're talking about uh, discipleship or mentorship, I, I quote this verse more than any other verse because there is something in our culture now that it's like, well, I, I want to be seen. I don't want to just be spiritual. I want other people to know that I'm spiritual too. But this is, this is great. And this one verse is going to help a lot of you because you're going, man, I, I'm not seen. No one's taking notice to what I'm doing. God sees you. God sees you. So you keep doing the right thing not to be rewarded in public. You just keep doing the right thing and just God's got, I got you. I got you. I, 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 can, I can see this. And, and, and what I want to do today with, with prayer, regardless of your experience with prayer, is I want to take the pressure off. You never need to pray to impress. Like, like you're not going, you're, you, you're, you're, uh, you, your vocabulary, your education, bigger words aren't going to move God's heart, okay? He's your father, okay? So when you start saying, God, I beseech you, he's not like, oh, wait a minute now. Whoa, this, this person really wants to talk to me, Okay? Like, no, th this, this is a person that's just going, you know, I, I want to have a relationship with my heavenly father. And if you're here today and you go, listen, don't even use the word father. Because we will equate how our relationship has been with our earthly father. And then when we fill in the gaps, our definition of father oftentimes isn't a good one. But our God is a good father. And he wants you to approach him like a good father. Um, he, Matthew goes on to tell us that Jesus said this. He says, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. And naturally, what, what you would think to yourself is, if he already knows what I need, then why pray? It's because God is not the type of father that you need to convince him that you are his kid. You, you, you don't, you're not like, hey God, remember, I, I belong to you. And, and, and so uh, think of it like this. Um, let's say um, you, you have a situation where a, a, a father, mother, maybe, maybe they divorced, maybe you've experienced something like this, maybe you've never met your father and um, he was supposed to uh, pay child support. Okay, um, and let's say he pays his child support. Okay, he's like, hey, listen, things don't work out with mom, but you know what, I'm gonna take care of my kids. And so he just writes the check every month, but he has no relationship with you at all. He's meeting your needs, but is he really meeting your needs? Because what you needed was a good father, more than you needed food on the table that's coming from this place. So God's not just trying to be your source, he's trying to be in your life. 
And so prayer isn't just this thing of like, well, let me just bring my wish list, and if God answers it, then great. We kind of, this is not a lad, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a genie in a bottle moment. This is God going, I desire to have relationship with my kids. And yes, I would like to meet their needs, but their greatest need is having a relationship with me. That is our approach in prayer. And so then Jesus goes into it, and, and he says, all right, then, this then is how you should pray. So you want to start off like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Now, when you translate this, um, this, is, this is a really big deal, uh, especially in the Jewish culture during the time that Jesus was sharing this prayer. Um, it basically would translate to this, um, our Father, Father of us, the one who runs the house. In other words, it would go, hey, here's the deal. You are in charge, period. You run the house. Let me ask you this question. Um, Who is the person in your house that's usually in charge? Like for you, if you're married, you're like, she runs the house, okay? Um, And maybe there's this child who isn't saved yet and they they run the house, okay? Like we've all got this, this like our, like our, our oldest child is beginning to run the house, but I had to shut that down. That's another sermon for another day. Nevertheless, it's going, hey, they're, they're in, in a house, there is a certain order in which things will go. And, and when you're starting off in prayer, you are establishing God as the person that runs your house. You are, and you're going, hey, really, I, I'm not even just saying you run my house. I see my house as your house. Like this is, this is all yours. So father of us, like you, you are in charge. In other words, uh, I want to say like this, you want to begin prayer with a recognition of God's authority and perspective. Okay. You're going, Lord, you're in charge and I'm coming to you so I can see something a different way that I normally wouldn't, wouldn't see it. Um, I I remember uh, my dad, uh, he, one time my my dad, uh, he would answer the door in his underwear, right? because my dad didn't care. Like, you know, when you get older, you just stop caring about stuff. You don't even, you, like, you ain't impressing nobody. This is pre-Instagram. This was during the MySpace days. My dad didn't even have MySpace. He's like, listen, this is my space, okay? So, like, my dad, he, he just didn't care. I'm like, hey, dad, man, I got some friends coming over. Like, can you just, like, put on a robe or, like, some, some pants or something before, before they come over? And what my dad say? You don't pay no bills in this house. I run this house, okay? Like, you ever had, you ever tried to, like, make something happen in your house? You ain't, you ain't paid not a light bill, okay? You know what I mean? And uh, he, what, I, what I've learned is, is that a good father says no to a lot of things they believe can harm their children. And, and I believe that there's some people here at every location, a guy behind bars in Florida and Hananiga and here in Rockford, Illinois in the 815, that you've gotten a lot of unanswered prayers and you've gotten so frustrated with God, you're going, man, why? I don't even, what's the point of praying? If God's not going to give me what I want, then why in the world would I... Would I do that? No, he just, he, he answered your prayer. He just said, no. Nah. <laughs> and he, he, he said, no, nah, for a reason. <laughs> I love when Jesus was teaching about prayer in Luke chapter 11. He says, you fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? It's like, you wouldn't do that. And a good father wouldn't let you date a snake either. think about it. If you're, if, if you're a dad here, if, you ever, if you've had an experience with a good father, they're going to go, they're going to tell you no to things that can, can harm you. And, and so you, I, I, I don't know if it's an unanswered prayer. Maybe God is actually saving you from disaster. Because some of the things we, I don't know about you, I'm, I thank God he didn't answer half of the prayers that I didn't pray because I didn't pray for some stupid stuff. <laughs> and, and, and again, this is the approach you're going, you're starting off this prayer, our Father. And, and notice what the next word is, in heaven. In other words, it's like you, you can see something from your vantage point that I can't see from this planet. So I'm, I'm going to, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust you. You, you. And all of us that, that have kids, you know, ch- children ask why? Because they long for understanding. Driving to church, Dad, where are we going? Church, why? Because you need to get saved, that's why. Why do I need to get saved? Because you, you, you have sin in your life. It comes out all the time. Like, and, and here's what happens. And, and this is why you desperately need to pray. And this is why I'm excited about 21 days of prayer because you're gonna have 21 days of doing what I'm, exactly what I'm about to, to explain. You, you're gonna have 21 days of going, Lord, I need your heavenly perspective on my life. After 21 days of that, you're going to see life completely different. The stuff you worry about, you, you, you spent 21 days going, dude, I, I don't even think about that stuff anymore. In, in light of the perspective that I've gotten from my dad. And here's what I know. When we live in our own uh, perspective, let, let's, let's try and go back if, if we can here. With this. Okay, when we live in our own perspectives, we, we make conclusions about stories that are still being written. And so when you've lost that job, when you've gotten that breakup, you're going, it's over. Oh, what am I going to do? Not when you've got a heavenly perspective. You, 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 God, is, God is never freaking out about your situation. He has never once gone, whoa, 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 man, I, I, I didn't see that coming. What are we going to do? God's never done that. God's not shaken by your situation. He's gone, yeah, I got a plan for your life. You're going to go through some things, but you're going to come out better. And yeah, I know your heart hurts right now, but thank God that it's not going to stay hurt for you to be tied to somebody your whole life that's going to continue breaking your heart. This is, God is going, listen, I can see the whole thing, and you want to start off prayer going, man, our Father in heaven, and say it slow. And going, Lord, you're in charge of the house, and I want your perspective on my life. Before I talk about anything that I even want, I want to start with, hey, our Father in heaven. And then uh, the, the next part, he says, hallowed be your name. Another way of, of, of phrase uh, that was used often in Jewish culture was carry the name. So uh, Jewish people believe, hey, God, God's doing something in our life, and we want to carry his name to the rest of the planet. And so hallowed be the name isn't just, hey, may I honor your name. It's this idea of I want to take this with me wherever I go. So even if you just simply said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be be your name, there's so much meaning in just that first phrase because you've decided, hey, you know what? Um, This is about you who who are, you're in heaven and this is about your name and I want to carry that. I want to be an example and a representative of you at my job, in my school, at the gym, at the grocery store. I want to carry your name everywhere that I go. And then Jesus says this next. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Man, you're you're coming to God and you're going, "I, I recognize your authority in my life. I need your perspective on my situation. And here's the deal. I I can't wait to get to heaven. But before I do, I want to make sure heaven comes here. I want to do everything in my power to see it is, it is about your kingdom and your will being done on this earth as it is in heaven and in my life. If we just started there, that would be more than enough. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it's a really short prayer. It's not that impressive, but if we, if, we, if we set it slow enough, it has the propensity and the potential to absolutely change our life. Because we're simply going, you know what? I don't want my life to be about me. And I'm gonna trust that you have more authority, more perspective about my life. And you know what? I, I want your kingdom to come. I want your will to be done. If we're honest, <laughs> most of our prayers end up trying to convince God to help us with our name. <laughs> our kingdom, <laughs> and our will. I mean, just think about it. Think, think, about, think about what you prayed for in, in the last 365 days. I mean, if we're, if we're really honest, we're going, man, it'd be great if, if my name, like, it'd be great if my kingdom got better, if my house, if my career, if really if, 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 if we wouldn't say it out loud, but if we could translate most of our prayers, we, it would be, Lord, may my kingdom come and my will be done. When 
Our, our prayers should be an activity that bend our hearts for his name, his kingdom, his will. So you, might, you may have prayed a very, very long time and you may have prayed for hours on end. I, I would just ask you to have a heart check this weekend and then over the next 21 days to go, man, how, how much of this is, is really for, for, for my benefit, for my good, for my will, my name, my, my kingdom, and how much of it is, is bending my heart towards his kingdom? His name, his, his will. What, 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 is, what is it really all about? <laughs> and then Jesus gets to our favorite part of the prayer, right? Because now it's about us. Give us. You're like, okay, finally. Okay, like this is why I came here this weekend. Like, okay, we get something perfect, okay? I'm with you now. The message can begin. Like, give us. This is, this is, this is, what, this is what we want. This is what we paid to see Jesus. Like, what do we get when we get to pray? Like, this is awesome, okay? And then he says... Give us today our daily bread. Bread was uh, a, a, even a major political term in Jesus' day. Like this bread was, was how a person sustained. I mean, this, this, was, this was everything. Bread in our context might mean a lot of money. Oh, you got bread? Okay, I see you. Like on some level, what, what, what I think, it, what I love about what Jesus is saying is, you know, this is what's important to me is making sure that you have your daily bread. And, and ultimately, this is what I think can happen to us, is that we can miss what God has for us today, being concerned about what tomorrow will bring. We're going to God going, God, this is what I truly believe daily bread means for me. This, is, this would be the Ryan Leak translation, okay? Lord, would you give me contentment for today? Would you give me something that's just going, uh, just enough, I don't need an excess. I don't need to be rich. I don't need, like, Lord, would you just give me a spirit of enough? Yeah. Just going, Lord, would you just give me exactly what I need? You know, take care of my family. Just to, like, but we, we live in a culture of getting our cultural daily bread um, biweekly on Fridays or the 1st and 15th. Where it's like, okay, I'm good. Like, you don't have to go to your boss every day and go, hey, can I, can I, get, can I get my, like, we, we have a culture where it's like, all right, I'm on salary. Like, like there, there's something taken care of, so I don't have to think about it for another two weeks. And so what that also means is you don't actually have to have a relationship with them for two weeks because you're going, it, it is what it is. But God's going, I want a daily relationship with you. I, 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 want, I want to spend time with you every single day to go, Lord, would you, would you give me contentment today? Dude, would you, would you provide for my needs? And you, if, if we're honest, most of our prayers, is, it's a wants list. It's a wishes list. Can you imagine if we just said, Lord, would you give me contentment today for, for what I need for today? I don't know what tomorrow will bring, like, but I, I want to focus on today. What do you have for me today? And I want to make sure that, I, that you give me exactly what you think I need for today. And then... In verse 12, it says, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now, this is huge. This is a really, really big deal in Cape, God behind bars, Hananiga, here in the 815. Jesus is going, hey, when you pray, If there's anybody in your life that you haven't forgiven, this is your moment. This is a big deal. This, this, this may be the, you, you may pray for three hours and if, if after three hours and you're done praying, you still have bitterness in your heart towards somebody else, you're praying way too long <laughs> and you need, to go, you need to go back to just this. You need to go back to just this and go, Lord, I, you, you, you might speak in tongues for an hour, and that's great, but if after all of that, you're still going like, treat people like crap at work, what were you doing for an hour? I'd rather you watch Netflix for an hour and, and treat people well and forgive people in your heart. On some level, Jesus is going, hey, here's the deal. Like, there, there's somebody in your heart that you're going, man, I can't believe they. 
Bring that to God. Bring that to an altar in your life where you're going, I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life hurting. I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life pointing the finger at the they, blaming them for my circumstances. Every time I go to pray, hey Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. May I carry your name. Give me what I need. And for that person, like would you, would you forgive me in light of, it's almost an assumption that you're already doing it. But you're going, Lord, would you, would you give me now? <laughs> Let me help you with this a little bit more, okay? I realize that there's some people uh, that are in our life that um, require a lot of forgiveness, right? And uh, you might have to forgive them every single day when you pray. It's going to take 21 days, okay, to like, you got to say it every day, okay? And I get that. But let's remember that, that while there are people in our life that require a lot of forgiveness, you must remember this. Sometimes we're that person in somebody else's life. Some, 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 somebody else, you, you are somebody else's verse 12. Okay, just remember that. You are somebody else's verse 12. So in light of that, somebody for 21 days is gonna need to forgive you. So in light of that, you're going, you know what? I, and, I, and, and sometimes the person that is holding the most bitterness against you, they haven't even told you. You don't even know. But secretly, they're struggling. It's going to take them 21 days or more. Some people might take them 21 years. But all I know is that when you're taking that to God, you're going, God, I don't want, I don't want to hold on to this. So Lord, would you, would you put something in me, the, the forgiveness you've given me, may I extend that to other people? You, you may have been praying your whole life and holding on to bitterness at the same time. Yeah. Don't do that. You don't want to do that. You know, no prayers. Is, <laughs> Dad, Dad, would you help me let go? I know what they did to put me in this, but Lord, would you just help me to let go? And the last thing Jesus says about prayers, he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, I, I think most of us, when we think of temptation, it culturally, uh, the first thing that people usually think about when they think of temptation is they think of sexual temptation. But I think the greatest temptation that we have, greater than anything sexual, is the temptation to take matters into our own hands when we grow impatient with God. We're just going, you know, God, listen, I've been leaving voicemails for you, and I don't know if your voicemail's full, but, or you told me no, so I just, you know what, I'm just, I got it, don't worry. You don't want to talk to me, that's fine. You're not doing a burning bush thing today, that's cool. No donkeys here, like, I get it. So, you know, I, I, I'm just, I take matters into my own hands. This is the part of the prayer, if I'm you, this is what I would say. May I not be tempted to take matters into my own hands. All right, it's the greatest temptation any of us will face. It's to be our own God. It's to go, God, I don't really like your timeline. I don't really like how you do things. It doesn't really fit with my weekly schedule. Okay, like I got bills due on Friday, so I got to hustle. I got to go do this thing. It's, it's for us going, Lord, may I work really hard, but mate, <laughs> you're the father of the house. You're in charge. This, this, is, this is all yours. Really, uh, the Lord's prayer is, is what it's, it, it's been called for 2,000 years. It, it really comes down to his name, his kingdom, his will. And, and then our, our favorite part is the give us part, and, and it comes down to our bread, our debts, our temptations. And we're asking our heavenly father, who's a good father that we don't need to convince, to say, Hey, would you take care of this for us? Would you help us with our contentment? Would you help us with our forgiveness? Would you help us with our temptation? May I not be tempted to take matters into my own hands. With every head bowed and every eye closed at every location, I wanna give uh, each and every person an opportunity um, 
to say a prayer. And maybe for you, this is the first time you're ever gonna pray this prayer. Um, and it, it's a, a prayer of surrender. You say, hey, you know what, today, I need to surrender my life to Christ because I have been living my life for my name, my kingdom, and my will. And that hasn't been working out that well for you thus far. If today you, uh, you find yourself in a situation where you say, I, I wanna surrender my life to Christ, or perhaps you say, hey, you know, I wanna rededicate my life to Christ at every location. Would you just lift up a hand and say, hey, that's me. Yeah, that's me. I see your hand over there. That's great. I see your hand right there, front side. I see your hand, man. That's awesome. I see your hand there. I'm sure there's hands at every, every location. Can we all say this prayer together as one big family of faith? Can we say, Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I ask now that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my future my dreams, my decisions, and my will to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. Come on, can we make some noise at every location for everybody that gave their life to Christ? Best decision you've ever made.